Over the past four years, we've been living through somewhat of a professional wrestling renaissance. Sure, folks might not be rushing out of cinemas and into bingo halls, but the sport's popularity is at an all-time post-attitude era high. This is largely thanks to the rise of the first true alternative to WWE in almost 20 years. All Elite Wrestling. After some enormous success, the young promotion is taking the next natural step by releasing its first video game, with the former WWE 2K developer Ukes at the helm no less. Looking to recapture the spirit of games like WWF No Mercy, AEW Fight Forever has some very big boots to fill. So does the inaugural outing have what it takes to bring home the gold, or does it end up staring at the lights for the one, two, three? Looking at the gameplay on screen, it should be pretty clear that AEW's debut title isn't looking for realism. Wearing its No Mercy inspiration on its tasseled tights, Fight Forever is an arcade-style wrestling game that favors pick-up-and-play gameplay over emulation or photorealism. Whether you're a long-time fan of their 64-era games or greener to the genre than the Outcasts, you'll easily be able to grab a controller and put on a bout that will make Dave Meltzer blush. Hitting square or X will throw a punch, triangle or Y for a kick, circle slash B is run, and X slash A will get you into a grapple that sets up for a throw when another button is pressed. Each strike can be modified by holding down each button or pressing the left thumbstick in any direction. It's intuitive, it's easy to understand, and it's just really fun. Let's face it though, we're not all Kenny Omega, so we're gonna need a way to cover up. Pressing the left shoulder button will block a grapple, the right shoulder button will block a strike, and a well-timed input of either will result in a reversal that will swing the momentum back in your favor. And, if you're feeling athletic, a quick double tap of the left stick in any direction will have you dodging out of the way. Shocking the crowd with a massive return to the ring after a 23-year absence is the momentum meter from No Mercy. This bar fills as you hit moves, making you harder to pin and submit, and also allowing you to hit your crowd-popping signature move when filled. Better yet, you can perform an ego-shattering taunt once the meter is full, unlocking your finishing move that will be sure to end the match. On the other side of the equation, your gauge will be depleted if you take damage, making it far more likely that you'll eat the pin if your meter is blue, regardless of how quickly you mash those face buttons to try and kick it. Mixing it up in the squared circle is easy to learn, but it's hard to master. Simple punches and kicks are a breeze, but there are springboard moves, topes, and anti-air reversals that all add depth to the combat. Unfortunately, you'll largely be left to your own devices when it comes to figuring out these maneuvers. Much like figuring out how to hit your sibling with a stunner on a trampoline without injuring them. While there is a tutorial of sorts, led by Lord William Regal no less, the more advanced tactics are buried within static menus or, worse still, never even mentioned at all. That said, the gameplay is an absolute blast, and it's the kind of pick up and play approach that wrestling games have been sorely missing. So mash some buttons and just have some fun. Fight Forever features nine different match types, from the regular to the ridiculous. Alongside the expected one-on-one, -on -one, tag team, three-way and four-way matches are the ladder, unsanctioned lights out and balls count anywhere matches, the casino battle royale and the aptly named exploding barbed wire deathmatch. The carnage that is the deathmatch and the bankable fun that comes with any kind of battle royale is appreciated, but I did find that the options were a bit limiting overall especially when AEW focuses so heavily on tag team trios, yet they're nowhere to be seen in-game. Fight Forever's story mode, titled Road to the Elite, chronicles the company's first calendar year, from Double or Nothing right through to Revolution. Creating your own bone bender using the game's somewhat limiting character creation suite, you'll play through four blocks, each consisting of three weeks of dynamite matches that all lead to a pay-per-view. But you aren't just grappling back to back. Between matches, you can train at the gym, go out for a meal, either vegetarian or carnivore, depending on your preference, sightsee, or even compete on episodes of Rampage and Dark. These side activities raise your energy and motivation, elevating how quickly you can gain momentum in a match and how easily you can stave off injuries. Matches and side activities will also net you some skill points that can be used to strengthen your wrestler and unlock new in-ring abilities. You also have the option to take part in mini-games run by the Young Bucks and Omega. 
These bizarre departures are just as arcadey as the in-ring action, and actually share a lot in common with the minigames found in Pokemon Stadium of all things. Clefairy says, so, sorry, Penta says has you following timed button prompts, Sheeta's Slugfest plays out like a micro game of baseball, and AEW Pop Quiz, well that does what it says on the tin. The minigames are an odd inclusion to be sure, but they're a fun way to break up the action, although that might just be the nostalgia talking. Win, lose, or draw, the story will adapt to the outcome, providing some level of replayability to the two-hour mode. Text-based cutscenes will push the narrative along, with your created combatant rubbing shoulders with everyone from Chris Jericho to Pac. Each block is self-contained though, so if you win the tag straps but your partner turns on you at the pay-per-view, don't expect that to have any follow-up on the next week's Dynamite. You can also use established names to take them through the same journey, but the skill-based progression is locked, so it ultimately feels a bit shallow in comparison. At launch, Fight Forever's roster consists of 52 of the promotion's biggest names, and a few others who have jumped ship back to the Fed. Whether it's a main eventer like John Moxley or CM Punk, or a mid-carder like Chuck Taylor, the models are filled with character and personality. Moreover, each wrestler's moveset, taunts, and playstyles are uniquely their own. Each wrestler even has their own chant that the crowd will throw at them when they're on top during a match, such as Adam Page's Cowboy Sh... Sorry, YouTube. These touches go a long way to making Fight Forever feel like a real AEW game, not just a No Mercy tribute act. It's hard to release an up-to-date game when it comes to wrestling, but it's worth mentioning that there are some odd omissions, particularly in the women's division. Not only is the field very thin, with only 13 of the 51 playable characters being female, but the design of the women's title depicted in the game is severely outdated. Updates and DLC can remedy this, so I'm hoping that the brilliant women's division gets the lion's share of the love going forward. The pro wrestling scene was left without a true alternative for almost two decades before the creation of AEW. And the same can really be said for wrestling games as well. While the simulation gameplay and presentation of the WWE 2K series are impressive, being able to pick up a controller, blast away at some buttons, and knock your opponent out of their boots with a buckshot lariat just feels right. Missing match types, a threadbare tutorial, and a lack of care shown to the women's division are all issues that need to be addressed, but with that said, the game is just so hard to put down. Fight Forever captures the essence of the great and silly sport that is pro wrestling, delivering an excessively fun experience that I'm hoping will graduate from Rampage to Dynamite straight to the main event.